Hello and welcome to the Mutual Fund Show on Bloomberg Quint. I'm Neeraj Shah. There was no other discussion that we could have had today. Last trading day of the financial year 2018. And while mutual fund, shoulder, mutual fund holders would be thinking as to why is it they did not sell off maybe 10% lower, a higher or 15% higher because enemies are down 10, 15%. The question mark is, is that the correct way to look at mutual fund investments? And what should you as an average retail investor do with your current as well as future mutual fund investments. Uh, before I get in our guest on board, let's get in Jayesh Khinlani. He talks about how the last three months have proven to be a drag for the industry. But that notwithstanding, a 12-month period uh, puts some, some really good sheen if you were indeed a regular investor or somebody who had invested earlier before the year started. Jayesh, uh, tell us which funds have outperformed or underperformed, not that really that's the same set of funds that will do well or not do well over the course of the year, but some names and some analysis out here. So we did an exercise to compare how mutual fund schemes have performed during this uh, quarter with the correction and uh, you know how the larger scheme of things looks like in terms of the FI18 performance. Let's have a look at uh, the results of uh, that study. So we did uh, you know according to category. So in the large cap uh, funds you have uh, these funds which have uh, you know given you negative return to the tune of about 5 to 10 percent. Uh, so you have Mirai Asset Emerging Blue Chip which has lost about 10 percent. But on an FI18 basis if you look at it it has still given you good return of about 12, 12 and a half percent and similar is the case with the other funds as well. Now if you look at the other category of funds that we have which is the mid cap space uh, we are, that screen should come up on the uh, on the plate. Uh, so you have the Motila Loswal fund which has lost about nearly 11 percent but if you look at uh, FI18 it is still giving you positive return. Have a look at the HSBC small cap equity fund that has lost nearly 10 and a half percent but has still delivered 18 and a half percent for FI18 and the other funds in this category also a similar situation can be seen. If we look at uh, the small cap funds, uh, once again, you know, starting from the Sundaram Smile Fund uh, right up to the Reliance Diversified Power Sector Fund, that has lost about 10 to 12 and a half, 13 odd percent. But for an FI18, uh, you know, consolidated level, you can see that anywhere between 8 to 36 percent, the SBI small and mid cap has given you return of as much as 36 percent for the entire year, despite falling uh, for about 11, 11 and a half percent. Now, the last type of category that we have, which is the multi-cap fund. A similar situation can be seen uh, where you know these funds, the top five funds, have lost anywhere between 9 to 16 percent but on an FI18 basis they have gained for anywhere between six and a half to about uh, you know 11, uh, 11 and a half percent. Uh, long point short is that while considering in, uh, investments into mutual funds uh, it should be done for a longer time horizon. Yeah, I think that's the key point that we wanted to bring out via this. It is not to tell that the one quarter of underperformance should really hold. I mean, it is to actually tell that one quarter of underperformance did not change your investing habits. But who better to talk about that than Nilesh Shah, Managing Director of Kotak Mahindra Asset Management Company, joins us right now on the show. It's so good having you. Thanks so much for joining in. Really pertinent, and the pertinent because one of the first questions that I got when I tweeted out that you are on the show today is that why no mutual fund house suggested their investors to book profits when valuations are high? They only suggest buying. Now most of the MF NAVs are down 10%. That's a really myopic way to look at mutual fund investing, isn't it? So every mutual fund has been talking about asset allocation from day one. You invest not looking at market, you invest looking at what is your objective. Now, if you become over invested in equity by virtue of market appreciation or by virtue of your investment, we always recommend to book profit. But the profit cannot be looked at booking at, oh, today markets are going to down 2%, so I should sell yesterday. Or tomorrow markets are going to go down 2%, so I should sell today. No one has ability to predict future. Markets will keep on going up and down. The journey of Sensex, you know, when I started my career was 1,000. Today it is 34,000. When I retire, maybe it will be 1 lakh. Who knows? So I am playing for 1,000 to 1 lakh. I am not playing for 32,000 to 31,000 to 33,000 to 32,000. That's not the game. Yeah, and more so in mutual fund investing, isn't it, Nilesh? I mean, I can understand you're an average trader or, or a day trader or a positional trader. Sure, the markets are at peaks of 11,000. Book your profits, buy lower. In mutual funds, I think the central message that we've been trying to give via this show as well, that please think long term and please invest if you have a three, five year horizon in mind. So in the mutual fund, there was a study in US huh. which uh, tried to figure out which investors made maximum money in a mutual fund. Huh. They were all dead investors. 
people who forgot that their investment was in mutual fund and continued, they made far more money than people who were trying to you know, move around from one mutual fund to another mutual fund. Now obviously, that kind of investment horizon is required. I have been always suggesting that if you can be kumbh karna, invest today and go to sleep for next 14 years and after 14 years you are going to wake up, then please put 100% of your money in equity. Okay. You will make far more money. But the reality is that post Ramayana, we haven't met Kumkarna. <laughs> in fact, my hypothesis is that if Ravan had invested into mutual fund and he would have just disclosed that anyway to Kumkarna, he would have woken up. <laughs> so we would have changed Kumkarna. But if you can be Kumkarna, really invest for long term and ignore all the volatility, that's going to give you maximum money. <laughs> that's Okay, that's an interesting example. Uh, you know, I want to talk about flows, Nilesh, as well. But just before that, I think what we've seen in 2018, and we're just looking at the data, um, and and whether that is indicative of what will happen in the remainder of the year. FY17, or calendar year 17, was a year of benign volatility, and therefore people usually made positive returns. 2018 has seen the re return of volatility. So while an average individual investor will try to deal with its own sweet way, even for mutual fund investors, expect volatile times, right? Don't expect the return of 2017. Undoubtedly, neither will be able to provide return of 2017 because that was exceptionally good year, hmm. nor we will be able to provide lower volatility of 2017. 2017 was Indian cricket pitch. You could have played a test match like T20 and scored run and luck would have favoured you. 2018 is South African cricket pitch. Even in T T20, you'll have to play like test match, save your wicket and score runs whenever there is opportunity. 2017, any batsman would have scored run. 2018, if you have the dedication and discipline of Virat Kohli, you will make run. So 2018 is going to be quite challenging, quite different, quite volatile, and yet it will give lower return. Okay. Now, you know, a lot of people have this question. I ask this question to a lot of fund managers as well about what do they think will happen to flows because domestic flows really sustain the market. I want to get that chart up on our wall and maybe request Nilesh to come onto the wall as well and just discuss this because this will be crucial for the markets as well, uh, maybe equity markets at large, but also individual investors. Nilesh, if I can request you to just come to the wall with me. Uh, and, and this is the steady rise, Nilesh, that we've seen sure. from April 17 when the flows were about 8,800 odd. We've just map these numbers and I believe these are pure play equity flows. Yes. I think we've seen a steady uptick in flows and by and large from these period onwards Nish, you would argue that this whole patch has not been too disappointing. We've yep. had some fairly yep. decent flows. Do you think this behavior, this investor behavior which probably started around August or July 2017 will last when the times turn volatile? So my feeling is that this behavior is most likely to continue because of this about 7,000 crores are by way of SIPs mm -hmm. and about 2,000 crores are by way of EPFO money coming into ETF funds. So roughly about 9,000 crore every month is most likely to sustain. And depending upon volatility, some of the lump sum money could go up and down. But by and large, will we be able to generate this flows in equity fund in FY 2019 compared to FY 2018? By and large, yes. Maybe 5-10% here or there, but by and large, yes. I'm more worried about the flows in the balance category. Yeah, I think we have a chart for that as yes. well, Nilesh. If I, can, if I can just request you to hold on while we pull that chart. Let's pull up the net inflow into the balance funds. And I think that's the point that Nilesh is trying to yes. make. The drop since December. Why has this happened? So one, if we see in this period from April to December, a lot of money came in assuming that dividend is equivalent to return. Right. Balance funds were declaring regular dividend. And in a rising market, your principal was intact and you were getting 1% a month or thereabout. But in a falling market, dividend, people, people understood, is different from return. Dividend is still coming in a falling market, but your principal is also getting eroding. Eroded. Dividend is not equivalent to return. That truth will be understood by the investors in the downturn. And hence, that flow which was coming in, assuming that dividend is equivalent to return, will start disappearing. So my guess is that balance flows will come down a little bit, even from February level. And that will be healthy correction. We want mature, informed money to come into market. 
we don't want immature or flows which are coming with wrong expectations into the market. We are conveying that dividend is not equivalent to return. Please don't invest in balance fund or any other equity fund looking at the dividend track record. Dividend can be paid out of your capital also. That's very important. There's also some bit of mis-selling, unfortunately, in English that happened as well to gullible investors, we have to admit, by, by various... Un elements. Undoubtedly, there has been certain miscommunication from distribution end or from mutual fund end. Maybe not from the mutual fund end, Nilesh, because almost every guest that I've spoken to uh, and who's come on the show, Nilesh, have been fairly vocal in saying this, that don't, get, don't fall into this trap of... See, again, when we communicate, it reaches out to one set of investors. Oh. It doesn't reach us out to masses. Oh, yeah. And we'll have to put more and more effort. We'll have to, you know, anticipate the behavior of an investor with a layman's mind rather than an expert's mind. When we say dividend is not equivalent to return, it's understood by some set of investors, not by all set of investors. So maybe some experience, maybe some better communication, maybe some, you know, Con concrete effort on the parts of media as well as mutual fund as well as distribution com community will ensure that the flows which are coming into mutual funds are coming with expectation of reality rather than ex expectation of perception. Okay, so let me ask you, to your mind, what kind of investors should invest into balanced funds, principally because these flows are coming off, and uh, what is what are those one or two things that they should definitely know before they go out and put the money in balance funds? So ideally, someone who doesn't want to do asset allocation and who has a long-term horizon should come into balance fund because there is 70% equity, 30% debt. The second person who doesn't want to do systematic transfer plan but who is willing to put lump sum money and take the risk of that, he should come into balance fund and then at appropriate market valuation or correction, he could move from balance fund into large cap equity. We can create a cascade of risk. So let's say there is a very conservative guy, he could start with MIP, which is 20% equity. Then he can come into equity saving schemes when markets correct, which is 40% equity. Then he can come into balance fund, which is 70% equity. Then he can go to large cap, which is 100% equity. And if market the fall doesn't stop, you can go to mid cap, you can go to small cap, you can go to sectoral. By then market fall will definitely stop. <laughs> so I can create a cascade for a conservative guy, for an average guy, for a risk guy, from MIP all the way down to a sectoral fund. And that's how they should utilize this kind of hybrid funds. Mm. I think keep in mind, viewers, what Nilesha is saying, uh, it's, it's counterintuitive in the sense that he's talking about getting into what is perceived to be the riskiest of the funds at a time when the market is at the lowest and which follows the popular behavior that, sh I mean, which should be, not popularly, but w ideal behavior that buy more and buy aggressively when the market's correct. When market gives you half folly, you have to hit it for a six. And when market gives you a Yorker, you just try to save your wicket. You don't try to go and hit out for a six. Even Tendulkar won't be able to do it with every Yorker. Even Mahinder Singh Dhoni won't be able to repeat his helicopter shot on every ball. Sure. They have also saved their wicket on a Yorker, but they have used all their might to hit it for a six when there was a half folly. Okay. If you stay on the wicket, you will get half follies. Okay, fair call. So stay on the wicket, uh, right through the storm, if you will. And therefore, the question, Nilesh, is that what, see, we can't predict really whether or not we will reach those levels where it's optimum to buy into the sectoral funds or small cap funds. Looking at the markets the way they are, you look at global economy, local economy, etc. Volatile times, yes. What should an average investor do now, currently? Let's say the investor is uh, open to take a moderate set of risks. So one every investor should focus on asset allocation. It's always easy to say in the long term equity will deliver outperformance. But in last 25 years, how many people have remained invested for this equity market bull run? Hmm. Uh, invariably, when markets correct, like October 2008, like May 2013, like December 2016, uh, people move out. People stop their SIPs. And hence, it is important to do asset allocation put something in debt, something in equity, something in real estate, something in commodity, that combination will deliver return on your portfolio. Don't 
get lured by the performance of an asset class, especially past performance, and get invested. That's not the way to make money. Second thing, accept the reality. 2017 markets delivered great return. It was a betting pitch. 2018 is more likely to be balling Morning. pitch. It's going to be more volatile. Moderate your return expectation because every ball can't be hit for a six. There will be balls on which if you save your wicket, that will be a great achievement. Third thing, try to be a long-term investor. I mean, while everyone believes that so-called so experts like us have ability to predict market, if you see our track record, you will re realize that we are all student of the market. We are not master of the market. There's no one who can predict future. Who knows where the bottom is? Who knows where the top is? So if you remain long-term invested, you will be able to ride the volatility of the market. That long-term horizon is necessary because that's the nature of the market. The third thing then comes a systematic investment plan. Please don't put lump sum money into equity market unless until you are kumkarna. Hmm. And we all know we can't be kumkarna. So try to invest on a regular basis. This combination of regular investment, systematic investment, long-term investment, and asset allocation creates wealth for investors. Okay, let me try and give you a specific case, Nilesh. A set of people, and there's a, a large set of people like these, who've just come into the markets over the last 12 months, maybe last six months, maybe last three months as well. This is the first bout of volatility that they're seeing. Uh, for such people who have some money invested in the market via their SIP route or otherwise, but have invested purely in equity mutual funds, they have their other investments. This is the first real equity exposure should they continue with their equity mutual fund SIPs is my question. Undoubtedly, yes. Number one, you don't evaluate SIPs on a 3, 6, 9, 12 month basis. If you see our historical track record, there will be periods where SIPs have given negative return for one year, two year, three year. But if you stay invested over a period of time, then those SIPs starts delivering great return. The biggest cardinal error which an investor makes is to stop SIPs in the bear market because that's the time when his negative return will be maximum. You don't walk out in a bear market. You remain invested through the bull and bear market and that's how SIP delivers return. So I believe last 12 months SIP returns will be negative to marginally positive. That will disappoint a lot of people. But this is not the time to stop your SIPs. You make SIPs for 5 years and 10 years. You make SIPs for 15 and 20 years. Please don't evaluate on a single year basis. Okay. So if you have indeed an equity SIP, it might be a good idea to stay put. What about balanced fund SIPs as well, Nilesh? And again, the, coming from a perspective of somebody who, who has no equity exposure in the past, and believe me, there are a clutch of people, almost all the questions that come in are from people who have only invested in the last 12 months. A lot of them started investing in balanced funds because they would have heard comments on the show, on some other shows, or read some articles. And they've had balanced fund SIPs. Now, you've seen these funds go down. Is it a good idea to stay invested in balanced fund SIPs as well? So you must understand what is your objective. Okay. If there is a widow who has who needs monthly income on a regular basis as well as capital protection, then balance fund is not appropriate for her. Not appropriate. Not appropriate because, because equities can be volatile and the returns could come from her own capital. And when her principal dips, she probably will end up taking a wrong decision. So we are not looking from a market point of view, we are looking from her psychology point of view. Right. She needs safety of principal, she needs regularity of return, She'll be better investing from credit opportunity funds to income funds to monthly income plan to equity saving schemes. That's the range for her. In that, she will get regular income. She will have reasonable protection of principal. Of course, there will be some volatility as debt funds also can go up and down, but that will be significantly lower compared to equity fund. Now, if I can just interject before you yeah. go on to the next one. I mean, so how different would, would these opportunities be versus uh, say say uh, a fixed deposit that somebody already has and is getting that uh, regular income from the fixed deposit any which way is Nilesh. So again in fixed deposit your returns are fixed but we all know interest rates can go up and down. Imagine a person who would have put in money in fixed deposits at 10% let's say five six years back. Today when it's coming for rollover that will be seven percent. Suddenly his income will drop by 30 35 percent. 
This is exactly what happened between 97 and 2003. 97, you remember those public financial institution bonds at 16 and 18 percent. Mm. When they came for maturity in 2003, they were at 6 and 7 percent. Imagine the plight of the, the deposit holder, yeah. holder. I mean, his income, her income will come down by 30, 40, 50, 60 percent. Hence, you have to manage your wealth properly. Now, of course, if you are conservative, don't take too much risk. Don't jump into equity fund. Try to remain between debt funds, hybrid funds. If you are average investors, then you can go into hybrid funds like MIP to balance fund. And if you are risky investors, you can take risk. Then you have large cap to small cap. Everywhere it comes down to asset allocation. How much should you invest is depending upon your risk profile and depending upon your objective. Okay. Now, just, just, just so that people don't take any uh, rash decisions, Nilesh, I uh, just wanted to understand from you again, please do consult your financial advisor individually before you take uh, uh, into account any of Nilesh Shah's advices as well because he doesn't know the kind of investor that you are and what are your needs. But would, it, would this be a good time uh, to look at small cap and multi cap funds or do you believe that if you don't have any investments right now and you're just coming into the mutual fund industry, a bunch of people who are doing that, that's not the best place to start with. What would your thought be? So in a very simple sense, uh, debt fund is like playing cricket in V. Right. Uh, equity is cutting the ball square or passing the ball through the slips through late cut. But when you're talking about small and mid cap in equity, it's like hooking the ball. Hmm. Now, many Take people can play straight, but they cannot hook. Better duck the bouncer. Many people can hit square cut and late cut, but they cannot hook. When a bouncer comes, please duck. There's no shame in ducking a bouncer. But if you have the ability to hook the ball, take the risk. Hmm. If you're lucky, if you're successful, you will get a six run. If not, you will get caught out or you will get injured. So please don't look at bouncer and then decide what you have to do. Look hmm. at first yourself. Do I have ability to face bouncer or not? Will I be able to take volatility of small and mid cap fund or not? You don't invest looking at that, oh, small and mid cap fund delivered 55% return last year. Boom. Please think about yourself. Will you be able to take 30% downside? If no, small and mid cap fund is not for you. If yes, then it is for you. Then think, can I go lump sum because I'm Kumkarna or should I go SIP, STP way because I'm a normal human being? Most of us are normal no. human beings. So think of SIP, STP. Fourth thing is, is my investment objective for six months? Is it for six years? If it's for six months, don't invest in small and mid cap funds. It's not meant for that. If it's for six years, certainly yes. So check your risk profile, check your investment horizon and check how much downside you can accept. Yeah, I was about to ask you, 14 years might be too long for a lot of people, but I think if you have a horizon of 5-6 years as well, pure equity funds will not be a bad idea. So, Kumkarna is a metaphor. <laughs> Unfortunately, or fortunately, is 14 years association. All we say is equity is long term. Take a long term call. That suddenly takes away lots of things. When I was starting my career, I asked someone that, how can I become a great investor? He said, it's very simple. You have to answer only two questions. And I said, wow, that's great. He said, ask yourself, the company in which I am investing, will it be in existence after 10 years or not? And second, with how much confidence I can say this will make more money after 10 years than it is making today. If you can get this to answer convincingly, you should invest, otherwise avoid. Interesting. Okay. Fair call. Now, which brings us to the final part of the interaction, Nilesh. One is what, where, how, you know, what products to choose within the mutual fund industry. Second is whether the equity markets will be supportive enough for mutual funds to do well. God knows we need that support coming in, at least in, in, in funds which have a higher equity exposure. What is your thought? A lot of people have been unnerved uh, when they came in into 2017 uh, and are realizing the first three months of 2018 are really different from what they saw in the whole of 2017. So 2018 is going to be a volatile year. The markets will go up, down, up, down, up, down. The downside seems protected because companies are doing, giving good results, interest rates have come down, uh, the election bound government is likely to spend more money and likely to do faster work, uh, monsoon is expected to be good. So all these things are supporting the downside. The upside seems capped because of political uncertainty, because of rising oil prices, 
and because of trade war related issues in global economy hmm. so we are more likely to see a volatile swing movement in markets now this is opportunity for you to make money hmm. if you can capture the bottoms great if not let your sip run okay i think that's that's sane advice as well but again i think it, it all boils down to uh, coming into the equity markets prepared irrespective of the market levels and investing for the long term i have a few questions in relation that have come in the final part of the interview um, i don't quite understand saurabh bandari's question but saurabh i'll never the ask ask uh, mr shah about this is how do we predict the mutual fund we want to invest in will gain okay i think he's trying to figure out if indeed it's possible to choose a fund uh, which will have a sure shot chance of gaining so one you have to look at the pedigree of the fund house what have they done in the past which gives you confidence about future there's no guarantee that past performance will be repeated in future mm. but somewhere if you analyze how past performance is generated is it luck is it skill is mm. it discipline is it you know outlandish call is it quality portfolio is it operator driven portfolio somewhere by analyzing the past you will be able to predict future and then you have to measure is this guy outperforming benchmark index is this guy outperforming its peer group is it coming because they have invested in operator driven momentum stock is it coming because they have invested in quality portfolio is the return coming from illiquidity is the return coming from liquidity But all kinds of, of factors come into play for a retail investor to do nilesh yes even while choosing a fund and i thought we were trying to tell people that don't invest directly in equities invest through mutual funds because that's the easier route out neeraj who said making money is easy if it was then both of us would have become billionaires but we are not god I has been, not no, god has been kind to me but i am not a billionaire for sure <laughs> the reality is that you have to have to you have to go to an advisor for evaluating all these things there are professional agencies which are doing research which are minutely deciphering how mutual fund performance is generated use those research to take a judgmental call on funds okay um one more question that has come in is and asking uh, sir can we buy consider buying index funds at the current levels uh, if you are going to be kumkarna buy index today and go to sleep for 14 years undoubtedly yes but if you are not going to be kumkarna then why not do sip in index fund if you buy something today something tomorrow now let me just give you a small example uh, if you see the election cycle hmm. 2004 market went up ahead of election in anticipation of a stable government hmm. on the election day when the results came out market fell 20% because they got a unstable government 2009 markets fell down in anticipation of an unstable government went up 20% on election results day when they got a stable government 2014 market kept on going up and up in anticipation of stable government and went further up when it got a stable government so somewhere this year it will be fair to assume that 2018-19 markets will be influenced by general election now if market is pricing in a stable government uh, maybe it's time to take some profit out because who knows you could get on election result unstable government and on the other hand if market is pricing in unstable government then it's worth taking the risk despite losses on your existing sip because who knows post election you could get a stable government so try to play a little contra try to do sip and you can buy into index fund definitely okay so i think that's the sum and substance of what mr nilesh has been trying to say uh, if you have a long term vision go into equity funds do the sip route instead of necessarily putting in a lump sum investment and do consult your financial advisor uh, before going out and investing we try and get somebody who can advise all of us on a variety of topics but it might make sense to have somebody by your side all the time nilesh shah thank you so much for taking the time okay. out and joining us on the mutual fund show And viewers thanks for tuning in to this leg of the mutual fund show